Hi, welcome back to my channel. This is a science class. My name is Senado. And before we start today's lesson, I would like us to have a short word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your love, your mercy, your protection, and your preservation. Father, we ask for your divine wisdom and understanding. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Okay, so in our previous lesson, we started with the circulatory system in humans. We looked at the concepts of the circulatory system, the functions of the parts of the circulatory system, and the composition of blood. So today we are going to continue and we are going to look at the functions of blood and we are also going to look at the human heart. Now let's start with the functions of blood. Blood has three main functions. These are 1. Transport, 2. Protection, and 3. Regulation. So I'm going to take these three main functions and explain them into details. In terms of transport, blood transports gases, namely oxygen and carbon dioxide, between the lungs and the rest of the body. Blood also transports nutrients from the digestive tract and storage site to the rest of the body. This means that the nutrients that are obtained from the food we eat are absorbed in the digestive tract. Blood also transports waste products to be detoxified or removed by the liver and the kidneys. This also means that waste products such as carbon dioxide and urea are eliminated from the body. Blood transports hormones from the glands in which they are produced to their target cells. Now, hormones are chemical messengers that are secreted directly into the blood and sent to vital parts of the body. Blood also transfers heat to the skin so as to help regulate the body temperature. Now let's look at the functions of blood in terms of protection. The leukocytes or the white blood cells destroy invading microorganisms and cancer cells. Now this means that the leukocytes protect our body system. They act as soldiers of the body, so they defend the body against any harmful pathogen or foreign material. They also produce antibodies and other proteins that destroy the pathogenic substances. Now, the antibodies are also chemical substances that are produced by the body, so they also destroy harmful agents. Blood also protects us by the formation of the platelets. They also initiate the clotting of blood and they help minimize blood loss. So the platelet acts as what? A, a part of the blood that helps to minimize blood loss. Okay. So whenever you have a cut or whenever you have an injury on your body, it minimizes the flow of blood. Okay. So excessive blood is not lost out of your body because your blood cells become damaged. So the platelets help in clotting blood. In terms of regulation, now blood controls the pH by interacting with acids and bases. Now the pH refers to the power of hydrogen or the potential of hydrogen. Now this helps to maintain the chemical balance of the body. So blood ensures that your body is chemically balanced. Blood also ensures that our body is also balanced in terms of our water system. Okay, so it ensures that water is balanced by transferring it from one part of the tissue to the other. Okay, so the, it regulates the water content in the body so that you don't lose excessive water. Let's talk about the human heart. Now, the human heart is a muscular organ which pumps blood through the blood vessels of the circulatory system. The human heart is also an organ that pumps blood throughout the body via the circulatory system, supplying oxygen and nutrients to tissues and also removing carbon dioxide and other waste products. The human heart is pear-shaped and it is found between the lungs 
in the middle compartment of the chest. So this talks about the shape of the heart and also talks about the position of the heart. So it is found in the chest region. So the human heart basically pumps blood to all parts of the body. Now this diagram here shows the diagram of the human heart. So we are going to use it to explain the different parts of the human heart. Now a vertical cross section of the human heart shows that the human heart is divided into two halves. We have the left part and we also have the right part. Now these two parts are separated by a structure called the septum. Okay. So the septum is derived from a Latin word meaning dividing wall or enclosure. Now the left part of the heart okay, carries oxygenated blood. Now when you hear oxygenated, what comes into your mind? Oxygen, right? That's good. So it carries oxygen and other food nutrients. Then the right part of the heart also carries deoxygenated blood. So this means it carries carbon dioxide and other waste products such as urea. So it has lower amounts of oxygen. Now, the heart, the human heart, is also made up of chambers, okay? These chambers are four in number. So we have one here, we have the second chamber here, we have the third chamber here, and we have the fourth chamber here. So the human heart consists of four main muscular world chambers. Let's look at the names of these chambers. We have one, the right atrium, or we can also say the right auricle. Then two, we have the left atrium, or we can say the left auricle. Three, we have the left ventricle. Then finally, we have the right ventricle. The auricles are found on the upper part of the heart. So it is referred to as the upper chambers. So it is found below the ventricles. Good. Now they are also referred to as the abscess of the heart. They act as the abscess of the heart. Good. Now below here we have the lower chambers. Okay, they are found below the atrium. Good. Which are the ventricles. They are referred to as the lower chambers of the heart. So you can also say they are the downstairs of the heart. Good. Now, however, the walls of the ventricles are much thicker and muscular than the walls of the atrium. This is because the ventricles pump blood at a greater pressure. Okay, so they pump blood out of the heart to the other part of the body. Good. Now, the human heart is also made up of valves. Now, these valves are four in number. Now, what are valves? Valves are flap-like structures, okay? They are flap-like structures or they are ducts. Good. The main function of these valves, okay, is that it maintains the direction of blood, meaning it ensures that blood flows in only one direction. Good. And so it prevents the backflow of blood. Now let's look at the names of these valves. We have the pulmonary valve. We also have the tricuspic valve. We also have the mitral valve. And we also have the aortic valve. Good. Let's look at the functions of these valves. The tricuspic valve, okay, and the mitral valve. The mitral valve is also known as the bicuspic valve. Take note of that. What they do is that they ensure or they control the amount of blood from the atrium to the ventricles. Good. Then the pulmonary valve and the aortic valve, okay, they pump blood out of the ventricles. So they pump blood, control the flow of blood out of the ventricles. Good. Now, there are also major blood vessels in the human heart. Good. Let's look at some of these major blood vessels. We have the aorta, we have 
the pulmonary artery. We also have the pulmonary vein, and we have two venial cavi, which are the superior venial cava, and we have below here the inferior venial cava. Let's look at the functions of these parts. Let's start with the aorta. The aorta is the main and the largest artery okay, of the human heart. That pumps blood out of the heart. Good. Now, what is an artery? Good. An artery is a blood vessel that takes blood away from the heart. So the aorta is extensive and it's muscular, okay? And it carries oxygenated blood from the left ventricle, okay? And passes through this whole channel, then comes out, okay, through the smaller arteries. So that's the main function of the aorta. Let's move on to the pulmonary artery. Good. So this whole structure is the pulmonary artery. Good. Now what it does is that it carries deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle okay, out of the body to the lungs and other parts of the body. Let's also look at the pulmonary vein. Now what are veins? Veins are also blood vessels that take blood towards the heart. So they move blood towards the heart. Now, the main function of the pulmonary vein, the pulmonary vein is this whole structure you see here, this whole structure, pulmonary vein. Now, they take oxygenated blood from the lungs, okay, and send it into the left atrium, the left atrium, just here. Good. Now, let's look at the two venia cavi. Now, the venia cavi, both venia cavi, always carry deoxygenated blood. So the superior venia cava, which is also known as the anterior venia cava because it is found on top, that's the upper part good, of the heart. And this whole structure is the superior venia cava. So they carry deoxygenated blood from the upper region of the body, that's from the neck region and from the head region, okay, into the right atrium good then the inferior venial cava is also known as the posterior venial cava they also carry deoxygenated blood okay from the middle and the lower limbs okay then they transfer this deoxygenated blood to the right atrium good so these are the main parts or the main structures of the human heart. I have summarized everything here so you can take your time and go through them. Okay, so we have this slide so talking about everything I have talked about. So take your time and go through them. Good. We also have this slide still talking about the parts of the human heart. The final slide talking about the parts of the human heart. You can make short notes from it. Then finally, let's look at the function of the heart. Now, the main function of the heart is to pump and distribute blood to all parts of the body. Okay, so the blood, the heart basically pumps what blood to all parts of the body. So this brings us to the end of today's lesson. Don't forget to take the Google quiz and then make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Thank you.